Hey everyone, welcome back to another Databricks episode. I would like to show you about optimization techniques that we normally use in Databricks. There are a lot more optimization techniques, but uh, in this session, I am planning to um, showcase cache. We'll see what exactly caching, different types of caching and uh, how to use cache. Right? So caching really helps to improve the performance of your Databricks notebook. So you are aware that uh, when the data pulls from the file system, it's very expensive operation where we have IO related expense uh, echoes, right? So if you think that in your program, uh, the data frame is used multiple places. If you're not caching the data frame, what happens is every time it involves IO operation, which is very expensive. So we need to uh, avoid such situations uh, and that will drastically improve the performance. With a small example, I will show you how it improves and uh, that you can use it for your day-to-day -day, uh, programming. <laughs> so to demonstrate this cache and persist methods, I'm going to use the same file that I uploaded previously to demonstrate some other functionality, but um, we can use the same file. Only thing is the file will be very small one. Let's check how much is the count and the size, right? So it's it's a parquet file. So let's read this file and create the data frame and uh, check the count, right? So execute this. Look at the time it taken. It's 59, 0 0.59 seconds. But we need to execute multiple time to take the average. So next time it is, it took only 0 0.39, 0 0.3, sorry, 44, 0 0.40. So let's keep it as 40 as the average time taken, right? So we can refer back later. If you want to see the records in the data frame, we have three fields, license number, industry, and business name. Okay. now we can check this one later how much time it is taking but uh, before that let's cache the data frame this is how you can <clears throat> cache the data frame right so if you execute this all this now nothing will happen it's just create the frame but when you take any action as you are aware that uh, spark is like a lazy operations right so it will not uh, execute immediately but if you do any kind of transformation then what happens is it it has to go through the entire record and pull that into the memory right so normally we use count method to read the records and put that in the memory so for example uh, now you can go to the compute and uh, the cluster go to spark ui and the storage here nothing is there, right? Uh, it is empty. Now let's go back here and uh, execute this count. Um, once again, yeah, we put that in a cache and execute this count. First time it took 0 0.50 seconds the same reason it has to read all the records and put that in memory but the second time you can see the difference it reduced to 0 0.13 seconds let's execute multiple times and take the average 0 0.15 0 0.14 0 0.17 0 0.18 0 0.15 so let's keep that as um, 0.16 as average what is the average we got before it is um, we wrote somewhere yeah, 40 0.40 right so 0.40 we got as an average here we got 
0.16 look at it's more than 50 percentage improvement we got it right now let's go back to the compute and the cluster let's go to the spark ui and the storage you can see that this rdd came here and look at the size in the memory all the data came inside the memory right this is how we use the cache and avoid disk operations if you use multiple places the same data frame in order to join other data frames or do other kind of transformation with the different tables then please use cache instead of uh, using the data frame from the disk <clears throat> okay all right so let's go back here go back here and what we need to do is let's say now we don't need the cache right so we have to remove that from the memory to clear it off so what we can do you can you can execute this spark.catalog.clear cache but only problem with this um, this will clear the entire cache not only your workbook uh, memory but uh, the other co-workers uh, cache also it will clear it off but here in this case not an issue so we can execute this and you can go back and check whether um, the data is there in the memory so nothing is uh, it cleared off right this is how you can use cache now let's go back to notebook check the persist persist and cache the only difference is persist can accept the parameters what kind of parameters it can accept the storage level parameters what are those storage levels these are the different storage level you can use it when you use persist right so you have the option to persist the data in a disk or memory or both memory and the disk if you keep memory and disk what happens is it can accommodate data in a memory as much as possible and remaining portion can keep it on disk right if it is only disk then it is same as uh, io operation it will be persisting in disk only but if you are using uh, memory only all the data will be moving into the memory but look at uh, some scenario like your memory is not enough to accommodate the entire data and you are using memory only it will be a problem so you have to understand the data that you are using it for your analysis and based on that you need to set up um, these levels okay so the difference between um, disk only or disk only two uh, memory and disk and memory disk two is it will replicate in two uh, nodes right similar way the difference between the disk and disk underscore serial is like uh, when it caches the data in memory or disk it serialize and store it 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 will improve the space but it reading while reading it will take more time it may be slightly expensive because it has to deserialize the data right and you have to note down this default storage level uh, if if you are not giving the levels for rdd it will be memory only for data frame it will be memory and disk and for streaming memory and disk too all right now let's let's uh, go and check with the so, uh, some examples how we can use it right so before before using this any storage level as a parameter first we need to import uh, storage level from pyspark so let's execute this now we have storage level and this is the keyword you need to use df dot persist storage level disk only right so let's execute this go back to our storage inside the cluster and see what happens let's execute this but again if you execute nothing will happen it's just a framework then you have to execute the actions once you do the actions you will have the data in memory or disk or whatever the criteria you have given so let's go back to compute 
and the cluster go to spark ui and the storage right now this is the rdd we created and look at this size in memory is zero but look at the size on disk it is 27 kb now again we'll go back and click on the notebook come back to the persist i am going to use memory only right so if you use memory only what will happen okay let's count let's go back to the same place and see what happened to that go to storage and um hmm. so here you can see still it is on the disk maybe i didn't clear the cache and it's still in the okay this is how you can you can persist so let's persist unpersist this one df dot unpersist let me go back again just to make sure that it's cleared off uh, spark ui storage yes it's not there now what we can do let's go here and execute this again right and df dot count yes it should be in memory so let's go to spark ui storage yes it's changed to size in memory so this is how you can um, do the test and check the data size volume your cluster memory then based on that you can decide what you need to do so again you can use the same um, unpersist it will remove the data from the memory so uh, th this is what i want to showcase in this session and uh, if you like the videos please like and uh, share and if you have any comments please write it down and uh, based on your comments i can come up with more videos so stay tuned for more videos for this optimization till then goodbye if you would like to receive more such videos please like and subscribe to my channel also if you would like to connect with me i have provided my details here my email and linkedin so thank you very much